Well, okay, guys. Uh, nice to see you again. It's uh, time to modify my clansman. This radio is in uh, fair shape. But uh, when I bought it for like 90 quid a few years ago, two or three years ago, I was quite lucky. Um, it came with a multitude of faults. The power amplifier module at the back. That little thing at the back there. Uh, wouldn't work. It turned out to be a, a dry joint. There was no audio out. Which turned out that the uh, the audio sockets on the, on the back here. Here we are. On, on the back. Uh, one of the PCB things. One of the, the thermistors that went through to there was uh, hanging off more dry joints in that area lots of dry joints in, in, the, in the power amp and when I opened it up there are a few bolt, nuts and bolts uh, floating about as well anyway on top of the synth module which was uh, you know is, is, is about there I'll show you in a little while um, comments written in black felt tip pen from the original uh, engineer in the army uh, saying it was a synth fault now uh, this would work ish um, once I, I cleared all the obvious faults I got it to, to sort of work but it was wobbling on uh, SSB and uh, CW uh, normally you can fix that by changing the capacitors everyone knows that uh, but in this particular case after changing the power supply completely I built uh, a brand new power supply for this and um, looking elsewhere sorry about that <coughs> brand new power supply homebrew power supply uh, so everything's stable and all the voltage is stable uh, the synth is still wobbly so that felt tip comment on top of the synthesizer module going back to 1985 or thereabouts is still valid this the synth is wobbling main thing you notice is it's impossible to decode uh, uh, whisper for example or ft8 you just can't do it because it's got like a hundred a hundred hertz wobble um, and on sideband you can almost get away with sideband people think you sound strange anyway on, on a clansman and 100 hertz wobble is uh, just a little bit more stranger but um, it's not 100 percent and of course we can't do much about the synth so with that in mind we've gone into the ins and outs of uh, installing a dds uh, which is on the bench now um, also got a power supply which may or, we may or may not inst install since we've already got one in there this would be an alternative power supply to go into the 320 um, giving the main voltages because it, one of the advantages of putting a DDS in um, is that we could actually get away since we're going into the, the radio so radically we could actually get away with removing the 110 volt which normally is, uh, controls the very caps for the front end tuning on the receiver and that tunes anywhere between 5 volts and 80 volts on those very caps so that the, the front end tunes to the particular band or particular frequency that you're on uh, and that's been always been a contentious area it's always provided a lot of problems with the, the 110 volt rail blowing up so it, there is a, a possibility of getting rid of that completely and replacing the very caps with 12 volt versions uh, which is, I'll go into detail in a bit later. Anyway, so we have uh, had a look round on the internet at all the various DDS modules. Uh, I didn't find anything I liked, which is normally the case. So um, I have uh, built this one, um, which is uh, an LED display, which I think is more in keeping with the, the 1970s, 1980s technology and um, it will um, it will it is run by an arduino nano there and the arduino nano then uh, controls the si 5351 which uh, gives us our if frequencies 
and the, and the VFO frequency. Okay, so now we've got all that, we've more or less uh, debugged it. We're going to uh, attempt to put it into the radio now, and uh, I'll keep you informed as we go along. So, 24 odd bolts later, we're inside, and uh, I thought I was telling you about the uh, the comments that synth unstable BRL landset, whatever that means. Um, that was in 2006, not too long anyway. So it was uh, reported faulty, and someone in uh, uh, the Me Royal Mechanical Engineers or whatever they're called decided that uh, this was knackered. Anyway, I repaired the uh, PSU in 2008, but uh, yeah, knackered. So, uh, what uh, the mod involves is basically getting rid of the reference oscillator, getting rid of that, and uh, possibly leaving that there unmodified. You can still run the mod uh, on 110 volt, but if you want to be posh, and since we've got the radio open, you might want to change that as well. That's up to you, but uh, just an option. That provides the 1.75, provides two signals out. It provides uh, um, an IF out, which is a sine wave, which goes uh, into the synth, sorry. The sine wave goes woo over over here into there, into the, the, the voltage controlled oscillator, where it gets mixed and all that stuff. And uh, it has another output, which is a square wave, where it goes into the synth, which is divided down, and that's how it works out where it is. Um, great. And uh, the main gubbins is, uh, the VFO is under there somewhere. Um, and that's where most of the signals need to go in. So we'll have to uh, take the uh, the ATU off to get it, get a bit closer. Now, with great care, you take the knob off at the front on the ATU range selector. I uh, normally uh, use spoons and uh, gently prise it off. Undo the nut and the washer. Then undo the uh, four nuts here, one in each corner, two, three, and four at the point. And then we can gently lift the ATU out. It's only held on with one wire. One wire, which goes to that terminal there. So we can uh, desolder that and uh, free up some room. I've got the advantage because my signal meter works when I use a pre-select. I can peak it using the pre-select. So signal meter is quite a useful uh, gadget when you've got pre-select. Okay, W5ID here, 5 slash 2 pt 
Okay, my friend, here it comes. Hotel Bravo 9, so 